Hi everybody, this is Peter Lum with Enphase's Training and Education Department and I'm here at our Fremont Training Labs and we're going to be talking about commissioning Enphase systems using the Enphase Installer app. To commission Enphase systems, you'll need the latest Enphase Installer app, which I've loaded on my phone from my local app store. I'll tap on it to open it. To use the app, you have to log in with your Enphase user ID. This should be the email address given to you by your company. If you log in with an ID not linked to your company, you won't be able to commission the systems for that company. I'm logging in as user1 at my company, Enphase Training. Tap Allow for Location Access. When you're using the app, this feature lets the phone tell the app where you are to select and set the right parameters for commissioning. Next, I want to enable Auto Download. When the app is running, this tells my phone to download and store the latest Enphase software for Enphase systems. When you connect your phone to the Enphase system to commission it, the phone app will check the system software and update it to the latest version. I can choose to download over Wi-Fi and cellular, but you can select Auto Download over a Wi-Fi connection only if you don't want to use your cellular data plan. When you are logged in, you'll be able to access four functions shown on the bottom of the screen. Systems, Dashboard, Support, and Menu. Checking your setup. Go to the menu option on the app. Verify that you are logged in as the right user. Check the version of installer app you have. It should be version V4 or above. Tap on the Settings option to check to see if the system software for commissioning is up to date. If it shows downloading, you'll want to wait for that to finish. You can see the progress as the files get loaded from the web to your phone. When it's completed, it'll show up to date. You're now ready to start using the app and commissioning systems. Now that we're ready to commission a system and I've opened my installer app, I want to go to the systems area of the installer app, pull down to refresh the list of systems that our company is working on. Now if our company has created the system ahead of time, which is our recommended best practice, then I should be able to find the system in my list. Our system is called the Training System 1, so I will go ahead and search for this. Once I found the system that I'm commissioning, I want to go in and check the system details, quickly scanning through to make sure that all of the information is correct. If it is, we can go back and continue on. In this commissioning step, we're going to define the devices and arrays that are going to be in the system. We'll start by tapping Add Devices. This video shows a training system, which is going to be a small backup system with solar and a battery. To add the devices, I'll start with the gateway. I'll just tap the plus button to add one gateway. After I add the gateway, I'll also need to add all of the other devices in my system. I'll add the three microinverters. I can tap the plus button multiple times to get my number in, or I can just tap on the number field and type the number in. This is good for big arrays. Because this is a backup system, I'm going to also add a system controller. I'll be installing one battery in this system. I don't have any range extenders or generator in this system, so I'll leave it blank. Scanning device serial numbers for commissioning. To scan serial numbers, the Enphase Installer app will use the phone's camera to capture the serial numbers into the app. I'll allow the app to use the camera on my phone to scan the serial numbers. I'll scan the serial number of the gateway from the sticker in the AC combiner. If you are installing a standalone gateway, the sticker will be on the standalone gateway cover. I'll tap to continue to the next task to scan the microinverters. I'll scan the microinverter serial numbers one by one, but I want to make sure that auto mode is set to on. This will allow me to quickly scan serial numbers one right after the other without having to stop. 
I'll move to the next task of scanning the system controller serial number, which is a QR code sticker on the inside of the system controller door. Lastly, on the system, I'll scan the battery. It's on a QR code on the cover of the battery with a second one on the front plate of the battery. Make sure you scan the battery serial number sticker and not the BMS or Battery Management System serial number sticker. The next task is to check your RSD or Rapid Shutdown switch. If it's installed correctly, select Yes. If you haven't installed it yet, tap No and the app will walk you through the right steps to power down the system before you wire the RSD. Powering up the system. To continue with commissioning, follow the steps to sequence power in the system from upstream at the main utility disconnect to the system controller. It's important to follow the sequence in order. Connectivity. In this step, we'll establish mobile device communication with the system gateway, set up the end phase network connection with the home, and continue commissioning the system by programming the gateway to operate with your mobile device. Tap connectivity to begin. To establish a communications link between the mobile device and the system gateway, we'll use AP or access point mode. This will turn on a network in the gateway for the mobile device to connect to. To turn on AP mode, locate the AP mode button on the system gateway and press it briefly and release. The green AP mode light will turn on indicating AP mode is active. Tap next on the installer app to connect to the IQ gateway. A diagram will show you current connectivity status. My mobile device has a connection and is communicating with the internet, but the system gateway isn't connected to my mobile device or the internet. To get my mobile device connected, tap Connect. Verify that the gateway in the pop-up is the right gateway serial number. Then tap Join. The mobile device will attempt to connect. A blue status bar will confirm connection when the mobile device is communicating to the gateway. The connection diagram will be updated to show this as well. If for any reason the connection fails, a second way to connect to the gateway is to go to the mobile device's Wi-Fi settings and manually select the specific network listed with the envoy and last numbers of your gateway. If you don't see the network, check to verify that the AP mode light is on in the gateway. Select the network and wait for the phone status to indicate connection is successful. Now you can go back to the installer app and the gateway will automatically establish the connection. Step 3. Configuring Wi-Fi Connectivity To configure the gateway to communicate to the customer's home Wi-Fi network, tap the Wi-Fi symbol and search for the Wi-Fi network to connect to. Enter the network's Wi-Fi password and tap Connect. The status bar will notify you when the connection is successful. It will also display in the connection diagram. You can now disconnect the mobile device from the gateway or proceed to the next commissioning step. System Provisioning In this step, with the mobile device connected to the gateway, we will program the system with all of the device serial numbers and operating parameters of the system that we defined in the previous steps. Tap the Provisioning button to begin. The installer app will perform a pre-provisioning check to verify that all that is needed to provision is completed. You'll be prompted to complete any unchecked items before you can continue. Before beginning provisioning, ensure AC is connected to the batteries. The system controller will automatically connect AC to the batteries after system startup. To verify batteries have AC, the batteries will display a flashing red light indicating the battery is connected to AC, but the DC switch hasn't been turned on yet. We'll turn on the DC switch later. 
If there's no light displayed on the battery, check to verify that the battery DER breaker has been turned on in the system controller. Tap the screen to confirm that AC is connected to the batteries. Tap next to begin provisioning. The installer app will begin programming the system by setting the microinverter grid profiles first, then programming the microinverter serial numbers into the gateway, and sending configuration information to each of the microinverters. If the system has a system controller and batteries, they'll be provisioned next. The final message that provisioning is completed is when the devices show provisioned. Now that the system is provisioned, you can continue to the next step of testing and validating the functioning of the system. System Validation In this step, after the system provisioning is completed, will enable metering and test the system for proper operation. Configuring the meters. In this task, we'll configure, verify, and enable the production, consumption, and storage meters. These meters are critical for proper operation of the system. Tap to enter the validation step. If the PV circuits aren't turned on, turn them on now. The installer app will indicate that our system is a single phase system with power on line 1 and line 2. You'll want to read the electrical shock instructions and tips for production meter setup by tapping on the down caret symbol which will expand the instructions. Ensure the PV circuit is on and tap the box to continue to setting up the production meter. Follow the wizard to guide you through setting up the production meter. First verify power production is as expected. Switch off PV and verify PV drops to zero to ensure nothing else is being measured in the circuit. Tap the box to confirm the microinverters have stopped producing power. Tap to enable the production meter. With the PV still turned off, next we'll set up the consumption metering. Read the informational notes and then tap next to set up the consumption meter. Indicate if there's any N-phase or non-N-phase PV that's installed outside of the microgrid. This would be PV that's not wired into the system controller for the backup system. If there is, select yes. If not, select no. Tap Setup Consumption Meter to continue. Verify that a baseline home load is showing. Next, turn on a known load, such as a 1000 watt hair dryer or power tool, to see if the metering shows an increase. Tap Confirm that you've turned on the load. Then tap Next to continue and confirm metering increase to show the load that was turned on. Carefully read the instructions and confirm that the wiring was done per the instructions. Tap Next and turn on PV by switching on the breakers. With no PV, the home will only be importing power from the grid. When PV is turned on, the import will drop and even reverse to export to the grid if there's more than enough PV to feed the home. After verifying power imported drops from the PV, tap next to enable the consumption meter. Next we'll verify and check the storage meter. Make sure all of the battery DC switches are turned on and have been on for at least 5 minutes. Tap the box to confirm you've done this. Tap Next to validate the storage meter. During this step, the installer app will command the batteries to change modes and have you confirm the operation. First, the installer app will signal the batteries to charge. Verify the app is showing the battery state of charging and check the lights on the batteries to verify they are pulsing green. 
Next, the installer app will signal the batteries to discharge. Verify the app is showing a battery state of discharging and check the batteries to verify it is pulsing blue. When you have verified the app and battery lights show the meter reading properly for charge and discharge, tap next to enable the storage meter. Functional validation. In the functional validation step, we'll fully test the operation of the system to ensure it's operating properly. Before beginning functional validation, the installer app does a pre-check of all that's needed to continue. You'll be prompted to complete any unchecked items before you can move forward to the next task. Tap Start Functional Validation to bring you to the Live Status screen, which displays real-time power flow in the system. Ensure there's some active load running in the backup panel. Tap to check you've confirmed this, and tap the Go Off Grid button to disconnect the system from the utility to check microgrid functionality. Live Status will display the grid was disconnected. Confirm that all backup loads are still powered. Turn on additional loads in the backup panel and verify that the system remains running. Tap the screen to verify. Finally, tap the Go On Grid button to command the system to reconnect to the utility. Live status will reflect the grid was reconnected and confirm that the commissioning process is complete. Permission to Operate Configuration and System Summary Reports The final task in the validation step is to configure the system to enable or disable power operation depending on the PTO or Permission to Operate status. Tap Next to move to the Post Commissioning Checklist. Enphase systems have the ability to turn off PV and battery operations through software to wait for PTO and then companies can re-enable the operations remotely when PTO is approved. To use this feature, the system has to remain energized and not shut off. Select yes or no to whether you have PTO for the system. Selecting yes will allow the system to continue power operations when the system is left on. If you select no, you can select to disable solar, storage, or both through software. Disabling solar will electronically shut down the microinverters and disabling storage will electronically turn off the DC switch to the batteries. Summary Report Tap Next to view the System Summary Report. The System Summary Report can be shared to others by tapping the Share symbol on the screen. Post Commissioning in the post-commissioning step, we walk the homeowner through their system, electronically give them access to the Enphase monitoring, set their electricity rate structure, and set their battery profile.